All right, example problem, nine dash eight. The question asks us, how much water in grams can you vaporize at 100 degrees Celsius with 953.67 joules of energy? And so we had to think to ourselves, hmm, what am I trying to solve for? And how do I get there? As in, what am I working with? And we're gonna actually do that right now. Before we crunch the numbers, we need to figure out what we need to solve for. We need to find how much water in units of grams. And in order to get there, here's what we're starting off with. We have a couple of things to work with here. We have 100 degrees Celsius, and we have this number here, 953.67 joules of energy. And I circled this one, and I choose not to circle this one because I wanna talk about this one really quick. This is 100 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature that it takes for liquid water to transition into water vapor. And the reason why that's important is because if we are transitioning from one state of matter to the other, would there be any change in temperature at all? The answer is no, because when we change from one phase of matter to the other, there should be no change in temperature. In other words, we would start with 100 degrees Celsius and we would end in 100 degrees Celsius. And this is pretty much the internal struggle. Trying to figure out, are we using Q equals MC delta T, or we're we just doing dimensional analysis to figure out how much energy it takes to transition from phases. Well, if there's no change in temperature, that would mean a delta T, a change in temperature of zero, a flat out zero, nothing. And if we plug in zero and we do the math, Multiply anything by zero, you would get zero, and that wouldn't get us anywhere. By default, we would have to do this. We would have to calculate this energy of phase transitions through dimensional analysis. And what I wanna do is talk about what we're gonna start off with. If we can't start off with 100 degrees Celsius, well, what about this? This is the only thing that we have. And we're gonna do that right here. 953.67 joules. And the question is, what can we do with that? From a previous slide, we had this information. The heat it requires to vaporize liquid water to transition into water vapor. Liquid water would absorb exactly 2,260 joules for every one gram of water. And so the thing is, if we start off with joules sitting at the top, how could we end in the units that we want in grams? Because we can see a vision that we can get joules and joules to cancel out and we end grams on the top. But in order to do that, we're going to have to do something that you guys should be familiar with with unit six. We're going to have to make these units work the way that we want them to. So by default, we have this. 2,260 joules. That number is sitting here at the bottom. And the grams are sitting here on the top. Once again, the reason why is for this reason that I'm going to show you guys with my red marker. If we start out with joules on the top, we need to be able to cancel it out with some joules on the bottom. And that's the reason why we feel justified in making sure that we can flip it so that we have this, grams, on the top. Because we want to end in this, grams. And so, taking a look back, taking a step back, do we have the units that we want to end up with? Yes, we do. And there we feel justified to now use our calculators and crunch in the numbers. With the math in mind, we have 0 0.422 grams of water. And so with that said, why is it 0 0.422? It's because of the following. There are five sig figs here, and there are three sig figs here. Just like unit six, when we do math, when we do multiplication, we look at the number with the least amount of sig figs. Three sig figs compared to five, our answer should have three sig figs. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final answer, 0 0.422 grams of water. I hope that watching this video, you guys are now a little bit more wiser and more uh, better off understanding how to do these calculations. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.